There are more homeless children than we've ever seen. We've already identified over a thousand kids in Madison this year since school started who are homeless. You don't have anywhere to stay, to lay your head. I would say the most dire situations are our families who are living in their cars. It was pretty cramped up, especially my mom had a small car. Not even my closest friends know that we've slept in a truck. Turn the heat on, turn the heat off, turn the heat on, turn the heat off. Everybody got a bag in here, teddy bear, luggage, lots of water, Gatorade, baby wipes. For homeless students, the physical hardship often isn't the worst part. If someone was to see me, um, how would that make me feel? I'd be hurt or I'd be scared. I felt like they might laugh at me and look at me like different. Some teachers don't realize how hard I, I have it on me. And it's like, if you were there, you would understand that I have nothing but clothes in a truck. And they have to deal with all that stress, that anxiety, those emotions about what has happened to them. Teacher Jenny Keister has spent 25 years helping homeless children in Madison School's Transition Education Program. Our focus in the TEP program is to make sure that we are doing the best we can to help kids really feel ready to learn. We can provide uh, school supplies and we can provide backpacks and we can uh, take care of those basic needs. But she struggled with how to meet needs that were less visible, but just as important. I was just so worried, mad. We don't hear the voices of our homeless children. Many kids d tend to hide it. Some kids uh, isolate themselves because of what's going on in their life. I wanted to figure out a way to have their voices heard. She hoped to find a solution in a unique teacher training program called Greater Madison Writing Project at the University of Wisconsin. We work specifically with teachers and other educators. It's a month-long institute in the middle of your summer. We work on our own writing because we believe that in order to be the best teachers of writing, we ourselves have to engage in writing. I was very much intrigued by it. How do you teach kids how to write and how do you help them find their voice? Jenny worked with the Writing Project to set up an event for homeless students. Her vision was to have some kind of day-long workshop for children who are experiencing homelessness. We really wanted to focus on the kids sharing who they were. So we ended up deciding we wanted to offer them a day away at the UW-Madison. Nobody can tell your story like you. We went to Union South, which is a really wonderful student center, and the kids uh, came and spent the day with us there. I thought it'd be really fun to do, to think of different things that you want to write about. This was an opportunity for us to really focus on the students, their voice. Homelessness is a never-ending thought in their mind. Can I stay with my family? Will I be taken away? Those fears are constantly part of who they are. I don't like to think about it, and it holds me back a lot. Writing is, is a way to encourage kids to let it go without having to do it in other ways, sometimes inappropriately. I wanted to yell and scream, so I just start writing. And then as I continuously write, it just continuously goes, and I don't like think, and then I realize what's going on, and it's everything that I was thinking inside my head was everything that I was writing on the paper. I'm falling deeper and deeper into a black hole. Friends fade away and family dwindles. You're all alone. You cry until you're dehydrated. Pain is now, crying is forever. Look out, Tishanae. Life is just beginning. It can only get better. They have this opportunity to be able to say, this is me not that stereotype. We started the day with um, having kids come and make journals. And the older kids worked with a group of adults that really helped them write and think about their writing. And the younger children uh, did shorter sentences that we made into real short poems. Writing it out is, for me, better than saying it. Because when you write it out, you can be confident and not like, what are they thinking? What are they saying about me? It's dark where I am. 
and I could not find the light. There are shadows all around me, and my heart is full of fright. Everyone is so cheerful that they can't even see. The storm clouds are forming upon the peaceful sea. I cannot see the future, and I cannot change the past. But the present is so heavy, I don't think I'm going to last. Sometimes putting it down on paper is all you need to do to release it. When I write, I figure out exactly what I've become or what I'm becoming. It made me become a stronger poet. If you're ready to write it on paper. They were able to take the experience at the university back with them and say, I spent the weekend at the UW campus. This is something we aspire for them. That this is a place for you now and in the future. I've never actually seen a college and it was really big, but I felt like that was the place that I really wanted to be. And the students weren't the only ones to see things in a new light. I went into it thinking I knew, you know, some things about what it would be like to be homeless. It's come to hit home so much more after really hearing them tell me. This is what it's like for me to, to walk into a new classroom for the fourth time in a school year. You can't judge me because you don't know me. You can't tell me what to do. You cannot imagine who I am and what I've been through. But most importantly, you cannot walk a mile in the shoes I walked in. If you can communicate your thoughts, your feelings effectively, you are impacting other people because of the words that you have on that page. And we told the kids up front that what you're sharing with us is, is things that we're going to share in the community so that they know who you are. The poems and letters written by the children were published into a book called Who We Are. We decided to do a book because it's something that you can leave somewhere and someone can pick up and be curious about and ask more questions. It can make people think more about what other people have going on and not tease them about their life. We also hope to empower them that they know they are published authors. For some of them, it's the first time they've ever seen their own writing in print. After the books were published, students were asked to read their words at a public celebration and book signing. I was a little intimidated, but I really like being on stage and in front of people. Sharing their stories gives them an opportunity to relook at what's happening to them. I will get some of these kids off the streets and giving them a place to lay their heads down. Putting them in the position of advocating versus feeling as if they're victims. It felt like I had a voice and to speak out felt good. It was kind of weird, everyone's just wanting my autograph. The cool part about it was that it's like exactly what I want to do since I want to be a singer and a poet. It gives me hope that change can happen for our kids. They're still open and still hopeful and still have dreams that something great can happen. They can see themselves as worthy people within the community. They're not just the homeless kid you know, in the corner. They're actually kids who have something uh, tangible to share, a real voice and a real vision about who they are and how strong they are. Deep inside, I have a good side. Deep inside, I feel happy. <laughs> I feel happy when I'm at school and do all my work. Tell my mom. Tell my mom. <laughs>